hello. So we have this word problem, and it says uh, 8.59 kilogram, kil, kilogram block slides with an initial speed of 1.68 meters per second down a ramp inclined at an angle of 28.0 with the horizontal. And it says the coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the ramp is 0 0.71. And it says use energy conservations, conservation to find the distance the block slides before coming to rest. Well, before we get started, let's draw draw this out. So, so we have our so we have our little ramp. Okay, that's a that's a pretty straight line. So we have our little ramp, and we have our little block, uh, a, a little block, on the ramp, and and uh, and this is twenty eight degrees. Oh, oh, by the way, the the red numbers is different for you so use your numbers instead of mine so so this is this video is just for reference okay all right and let's let's draw a free body diagram for the for the object as well so we have our object we have our object and we know we know that um the down here the, the going down one this this is going to be like the normal the the mg and this is going to be mg sine theta sine theta and and this one well actually this is cosine theta my bad so this is actually cosine theta a lot of people usually get confused um, when when you're doing a ramp thing but this is cosine theta and this one is sine theta, so it's mg sine theta. And which means the normal force, since it's not moving like this way or this way, the normal force would also be would also be mg mg cosine theta. And lastly we have our frictional force, and our frictional force is going to be it's going to be mg mg cosine theta times the mu because frictional force is normal force times mu so mu times mg cosine theta it's going to be our frictional force <laughs> all right so let's now let's figure out how how uh, how much this block travels before coming to rest I didn't draw the bottom part of the block, so I just drew it. Well, in this problem, we actually have a non-conservative force um, in the mix here, and that is going to be the frictional force. And non-conservative work, and that's that's caused by the frictional force. So uh, we have we have to write it, the equation a little bit differently. So basically. It's just going to be Ke1, which is just going to be the starting point, plus Pe1, plus work, the non-conservative work, is going to equal to Ke2 Ke plus Pe2. So we're, we're just throwing this non-conservative force in the non-conservative work in the mix. Okay, so. So what does Ke1 um, Ke1 equal to at, at this point, at the very top? Well, it says the initial speed is 1.68. So it's it's just gonna be it's just gonna be um, mv squared. It's gonna have some sort of kinetic energy, so I'm just gonna write mv squared over two here, which which represents the kinetic energy plus potential energy and the poten potential energy is going to be something something different well potential energy, yeah something different because um, let's just say that uh, the horizontal um, is going to be let's just say the horizontal is negative here so this is going to be I mean horizontal is zero here so the horizontal is that the, I mean the top of the ramp is 
zero. So this is actually going into a negative direction. So if, if it's going downward, it's going to be negative. So the so potential energy at the top would be zero because um, we're saying that this is we're we're saying the top is zero. Now plus some sort of work, and the work is defined by um, force time. Work work is force times distance. So work is this is the force. So times distance, and we're gonna just we're just gonna label d as the distance that it travels. So we're just solving. We're gonna solve for d later. So it plus mu mg cosine theta cosine theta times d is equal to kinetic energy two, and that's gonna be zero because because it comes to a stop, and the potential energy is gonna be a negative because it's going to be below the horizon, horizon and you're actually taking away the work so this is this must be a negative as well you're taking away work from the system so this is going to be a negative so zero back to potential energy when pot potential energy is going to be negative m mg height height okay so before um let, let, let's let's see what what height is though we know that the height is from here we know that height only is vertically but this is in an angle so how do we do that well well this, we can use basic trigonometry well if this is a height and this is a distance that's traveled so if, if we say the the thing is right here then then it, it might stop here it might stop here but whatever because this is going to be the distance traveled so Let's say that it stops here. Well, that's going to be this, this distance. And we have our angle, which is 28 degrees, which, which is a theta. So how do we solve for height? Well, we know that we will so katoa. Um, and we know that sine is equal to sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So what is our sine of theta? I mean, what is our opposite of, of this angle? It's height. It's, it's the height. And what is our hypotenuse? It's d. So if we, sol if, if we solve for height, um, we get sine of theta is equal to, or sine of d times sine of theta, because we multiply d on each side, is equal to height. Now, since d sine theta is equal to height, we can plug this into here because um, because it's it reduces a variable because we have d here and d here, and we're 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 sort of searching we're solving for d uh, d anyway. So so let's just plug that in there. So if we do that, then we get then instead of this equation, we get mg times mg times d sine theta d sine theta and and all these zeros disappear so zeros cancel out each other and it seems like it seems to me that the mass cancels out as well so cancel the mass will cancel out as well the mass cancel here, mass cancel here, mass cancel here. And now it's all it's the matter, it's just a matter of solving for D. So let's let's go ahead and solve for D. Okay. So, um, so how do we do that? Well, let's let's put the terms term with the d in it on the same side first. So v v over two. So we add this term on each side. So v squared over two is equal to um, mu g cosine theta d minus g d sine theta. And it seems like we can factor out some variables here. We can factor out a g and we can factor out a d. So v squared over 2 is equal to um, gd, because we factor out gd, 
um, and mu times cosine theta because if we factor out GD here we're left with mu and cosine theta minus sine theta because if we factor out those two then we're only left with sine theta sine theta okay so now I guess we can solve for D because we can divide by mu cosine theta minus sine theta and we can divide by G so so we can say that D is equal to V squared over 2G 2G times times mu mu cosine theta minus sine theta so what are what are those value values well let's let's just figure it out let's just plug it into our calculator all right so we have we have v squared v squared which is 1.68 squared all over 2 times g g is 9.8 times mu cosine theta minus sine theta so so mu is mu is mu is 0 0.71 because that's the coefficient of kinetic friction so 0 0.71 times times cosine theta cosine of theta and theta is 28 degrees minus sine of theta and we get 0.915 so D is equal to 0.915 and in 5 meters and that's basically how you how you solve this problem